Sup Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, for those of you hair loss switchers who are sick of me talking about seed oils and butter, rejoice. We're officially back to the topic of hair loss witchery. And what better way to reintroduce the hair loss topic than discussing the illustrious Dutasteride Master Race in all their glory. As grand as the Master Race may be, there is still a lot of misinformation about Dutasteride online, especially in regards to its efficacy. I already addressed this in a previous video, but today Today, I'd like to go more in depth with just how effective Dutasteride actually is at defeating the Slaphead Curse because I think a lot of people cannot fathom just how effective this treatment really is. A lot of this skepticism is due to gaslighting about the drug's efficacy from hair loss communities like Tressless, where every day we hear someone talking about how they're on Dutasteride but still losing ground. Oftentimes, we'll even hear people claim that they're on 2.5 milligrams of Dutasteride and they're still rapidly losing their hair even though 2.5 milligrams of Dutasteride is literally the strongest hair loss treatment you can possibly take. But you'll notice one thing in common about all the people who make these claims. They never have any photographic evidence to back any of their claims up. They just expect everybody to take it on faith that Dutasteride, a drug which is even more effective than Finasteride, is not stopping their hair loss or even making it worse. And oftentimes, it seems that people are taking it on faith. Every time someone uploads a post claiming they're losing hair on Dutasteride, you never hear anyone ask, well, do you have any proof? Well, Chooms, I'm here today to tell you that Dutasteride making your hair loss worse is completely impossible. The people who claim they're losing their hair on Dutasteride are either panicking about a treatment shed or they're just trolling. Out of all the people who have ever claimed that Dutasteride made their hair loss worse, not a single one of them has ever shown any objective data to verify it, like showing us data from a photo trickogram. The claims being made that Dutasteride isn't working have gone unchallenged for far too long, so it falls upon me to call out these people's bullshit once again. You are not losing hair on Dutasteride. In fact, we now have new data looking directly at DHT levels in the hair follicles themselves, and it shows that Dutasteride absolutely nukes DHT in the hair follicles, much more so than we previously thought. Dutasteride suppresses DHT in the hair follicles to the point where DHT levels are unmeasurable. So, there are some old studies that measured how much finasteride and dutasteride suppress DHT in the blood serum and in the skin of the scalp, like this study here. In all these studies, dutasteride suppresses serum and scalp DHT more than finasteride does. If you look at the actual percentages, you can see that a dose of just 0.1 mg a day of dutasteride suppresses suppresses serum DHT by almost the same amount as a dose of 5 mg of finasteride per day. Dutasteride at 0.1 mg a day suppresses serum DHT by 70%, while finasteride at 5 mg per day suppresses it by 73%. That's why an alternative to the finasteride peasantry is to join the dutasteride middle class, because that way you get roughly the same benefits on hair growth as finasteride, but with possibly a lower risk of side effects. I talk about that in my low-dose dutasteride video that I'll link below. However, with the standard dutasteride master race dose of 0.5 mg of dutasteride per day, dutasteride outperforms finasteride by suppressing DHT levels by 92%. If you want to go even further than that, there is the dutasteride master race amongst the master race, which is called the Dutasteride Exalted Race, which uses a dose of 2.5 milligrams per day. That exalted dose suppresses serum DHT levels by even more than 0.5 milligrams. It suppresses it by 96%. 2.5 milligrams of Dutasteride is the most powerful hair loss treatment in existence today that can be used safely. But what's much more important than serum DHT suppression is scalp DHT suppression, because that's where the hair follicles are, obviously. In the scalp, DHT was suppressed by 41% by finasteride at a dose of 5 milligrams per day. Day. It was a little less suppressed by Tutasteride at 0.1 mg per day with 32% suppression. However, with standard and high doses of Dutasteride, the amount of scalp DHT suppression greatly exceeds what you can achieve with Finasteride. Dutasteride at 0.5 mg per day suppressed scalp DHT by 51%, and at the exalted dose of 2.5 mg per day, it suppresses scalp DHT by an astonishing 79%. The researchers also looked at hair counts on these different doses that were used, and it was found that there was a tight correlation between the amount of scalp DHT suppression and hair regrowth. Of course, this makes perfect sense since androgenic alopecia is due to the trash hormone DHT, and the more you suppress DHT, the better results you get in hair regrowth. However, there are two Buck Kevin style objections you could hypothetically make while examining this data. The first is, but Kevin, Dutasteride even at 2.5 milligrams per day doesn't completely eliminate scalp DHT. 
DHT, you still have 21% residual scalp DHT, and that might still be enough DHT for androgenic alopecia to progress, especially if your hair follicles are really, really sensitive to DHT. So you can't say dutasteride is going to stop hair loss in everyone, bro. The second objection is, but Kevin, you're just looking at scalp DHT here, and the scalp isn't just made up of hair follicles, bro. It also has a lot of sebaceous glands. We know that sebaceous glands have a lot of the type 1 5 air ISO enzymes that dutasteride blocks and finasteride doesn't block. So maybe the decrease in scalp DHT from dutasteride is just from dutasteride's effects on sebaceous glands and it really isn't having that much more of an effect on hair follicles than finasteride. Didn't you think of that one, bro? Okay, Jims. Those are both completely valid criticisms that I am happy to address. But what we really need in order to answer those questions is a study on the effects of finasteride and dutasteride on the hair follicles themselves. And unfortunately, there is no study like that right now, so I'm going to have to end this video right here. So thank you for watching. God bless. Just kidding, hair loss witchers. I've got the study. It's this one right here that was published in 2023, so fairly recently. So this study first points out that up until now, we've not had any good research showing that locally produced DHT in the dermal papilla cells is suppressed by 5 air blocking drugs. That's because no one in the past has actually measured the effects of 5 air blocking drugs in the hair follicles themselves. The study authors say, quote, this lack of discussion is due to the lack of two crucial pieces of evidence. Number one, that finasteride and dutasteride reach target organs scalp, hair follicles, etc. through circulation, and number two, that the DHT levels in these target organs were reduced, unquote. So in order to remedy this lack of direct evidence, the investigators worked out a way to measure finasteride, dutasteride, and DHT levels in hair samples. They made these measurements in 1,078 men with androgenic alopecia. Ten hairs were painlessly extracted from the top of the head of each subject. The hairs were then analyzed. Although all the men had androgenic alopecia, the study doesn't tell us what doses of finasteride or the men were on. In fact, many of the men were not on either drug. What the study did do was record the drug levels in the hair follicles and classify the men as being on finasteride, dutasteride, both finasteride and dutasteride, or on no drug at all. So, what were the results? Well, the investigators ended up with a finasteride group of 171 subjects and a dutasteride group of 62 subjects. The rest of the subjects were taking neither drug. When the DHT concentration was plotted against the drug concentrations, there was an inverse correlation between drug concentration and DHT levels for both finasteride and dutasteride. That makes sense. The higher the drug level, the lower the DHT is in the hair follicles. But the key to the study is right here in this figure. This figure compares the average follicular DHT concentrations in the no drug group, the finasteride group, the dutasteride group, and the group taking both finasteride and dutasteride. As you can see, finasteride lowers the follicular DHT concentration significantly compared to taking no drug. However, dutasteride positively eliminates DHT in the hair follicles, either by itself or in people taking it alongside with finasteride. In fact, in the dutasteride group, only 11 of 62 cases had values that were above the lower limit of detection of DHT. That's right, the majority of people taking dutasteride had undetectable DHT levels in their hair follicles. So, this study shows that on average, finasteride reduced the DHT concentration in the hair follicles by 64%. So, that's pretty interesting because that's exactly the same decrease in DHT for finasteride at 1 mg per day that was found in the first study of the effects of finasteride on scalp DHT levels. However, the later study on finasteride scalp DHT suppression found only a 41% reduction of scalp DHT. But either way, however much scalp DHT is being suppressed, we know it is enough since we have clinical trials proving that finasteride will stop and reverse hair loss in the vast majority of people. But when you compare this follicular DHT suppression to dutasteride, dutasteride sends finasteride to the hall of shame. As you can see, the amount of follicular DHT reduction was 92% on average, again with DHT being completely undetectable in the majority of cases. This is even more than the DHT suppression seen in the previous study of the effect of dutasteride on scalp DHT. That study showed a suppression of scalp DHT of 51% with dutasteride at 0.5 mg per day and 79% with a dose of 2.5 mg per day, which already sounds like a lot, but when we measure DHT at the follicular level, we see that both finasteride and especially dutasteride are much more effective at destroying the trash hormone DHT than we originally gave it credit for. 
When looking at people on both finasteride and utasteride, there was no advantage over finasteride alone, so the authors of the study felt that there's no advantage to administering both drugs together. However, I do personally think it is still a reasonable strategy to sometimes add a dose of dutasteride maybe once or twice per week to boost the effects of finasteride, especially if you're already a good responder to finasteride and want to dip your toes into extra DHT suppression without completely abandoning a drug you're responding very well to, and I talk about all that in this video here. So the study concludes that these drugs when taken orally do reach the hair follicles, which of course was never in doubt. It also shows that the amount of DHT suppression in the hair follicles is related to the drug concentration in the hair follicles. The study demonstrates once again that dutasteride is superior to finasteride in suppressing DHT in the hair follicles, so the dutasteride master race remains undefeated yet again. Congratulations. If I were to add anything, it would be that this new research shows us that there is more DHT suppression in the hair follicles from these drugs than there is when looking at just scalp biopsies. That may be because the 5 air isoenzyme located in the scalp is the type 2 enzyme. Finasteride is a specific type 2 isoenzyme blocker, but dutasteride has both type 1 and type 2 blocking effects, but its type 1 blocking effects are much weaker than its type 2 blocking effects. Also, dutasteride is three times stronger at blocking the type 2 isoenzyme than finasteride, and that accounts for its ability to nuke DHT in the hair follicles. So, dutasteride's improved efficacy over finasteride is related to its superiority in blocking the type 2 isoenzyme as opposed to the type 1 isoenzyme, which isn't known to play any role in hair loss. The type 2 5-air isoenzyme is found in parts of the hair follicles that are critical for hair growth. Also, we know that men born with a genetic deficiency of the type 2 5-air isoenzyme never go bald, so all that supports the idea that it is the type 2 5-air isoenzyme and not the type 1 that causes baldness. Anyways, this study confirms that dutasteride is the best hair loss treatment we have. It has the ability to make DHT undetectable in the hair follicles. So let me state emphatically that dutasteride is not under any circumstances going to make your hair worse. At a minimum, it will stop hair loss completely, and most likely, it will also cause regrowth in most people, including people with severe forms of hair loss like dupa and retrograde alopecia. The claims people make about why dutasteride doesn't work are all completely bogus. The most common claim is that since dutasteride raises testosterone, this rise in testosterone is making their hair loss worse. But there is no evidence that testosterone causes hair loss, literally none whatsoever. Just so long as the 5 air enzyme is under control, testosterone cannot cause hair loss since it cannot convert into DHT, which actually causes hair loss. Remember that even the population I mentioned who were born without the type 2 5 air enzyme, they never got hair loss even though their testosterone levels are usually higher than normal. Even steroid users can stop hair loss with finasteride, so so long as they're not using any DHT-based compounds like Anadrol or Winstrol. I discussed why dutasteride can't make your hair loss worse in this video that I'll link below, and since I brought up hair loss and steroids, I'll go ahead and link my steroid video below too if you want to learn more about hair-safe steroid stacks. So, anyways, the next time any of you chooms come across some posts of someone claiming to be on dutasteride, but they're still losing their hair, ask them to prove it. Ask them to show some timestamp photographs using the same angles and lighting, proving that they've actually lost ground. Or even better, have them show some objective measurements, like a hair count from a phototrochogram. If someone wants to claim they're losing their hair on a 5-air inhibitor, the burden of proof is on them. Now, I'm not saying that all these people are liars, but I do think, nevertheless, that a lot of them are high hypochondriacs who are panicking about a shed because they don't understand hair growth cycles. All effective hair loss treatments can cause periodic shedding because they all shorten the telogen resting phase of the hair cycle. This results in the normal telogen phase shedding to occur over a shorter period of time. So hair that was going to be shed anyways ends up shedding faster than it would normally have shed. This also causes the hair cycle to synchronize and because of this you can get periodic shedding even after being on treatment for months or even years. Even people without androgen alopecia experience shedding because it is impossible to keep a hair follicle in the angin growth phase forever. We just take it for granted until we find out we have androgenic alopecia. If you look at the hairbrush of any woman, I guarantee you that it will be full of hair. I talk about all this in my shedding video that I'll link below, so please, if you have any questions about shedding, this is a must-watch video. But the fact remains is that there has never been one verified case report of anyone with androgenic alopecia losing hair from dutasteride, and even if someone did, it wouldn't be hair loss from androgenic alopecia. There are other rare forms of hair loss that aren't due to DHT, like alopecia areata or scarring alopecia. If you are really 
100% absolutely convinced you are losing your hair on dutasteride, maybe you are, but it isn't from androgenic alopecia. What you should be doing instead of going online and claiming you're losing your hair on dutasteride is you should go to a dermatologist and have them properly examine you to see if you are actually losing your hair and what is causing it. When you go online and claim that dutasteride isn't working, all you're doing is creating fear, uncertainty, and denial about dutasteride, and you're gaslighting the entire hair loss community. So please, chums, you should be excited about being on dutasteride because dutasteride will make your hair immortal. I'm not exaggerating. I really mean that. Join the dutasteride master race and your hair follicles will outlive Brian Johnson and even the stars themselves. Thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers. God bless.